We have nothing to fear from Washington, D.C. I've said it before, I'll say it again. To the people of the state of Florida, it really doesn't matter who the president is. Nothing changes for us. We have prepared, we have trained, we have put contingencies in place to protect our sovereignty. We fly our own wing of F-15s. The 159th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron reports to Governor DeSantis. We have engineers, we have artillery, we have infantry. We're going to be just fine. I'd like to share this map with my audience today to give them an idea of what would be waiting for any type of federal intervention. Every little golden cross that you see here is a Florida Army National Guard unit. And this is just the Army National Guard. There's nothing they're going to do to disturb our peace. If I wanted to, I could prop open my front door, open my back door, the garage door, and just let the night air blow through the house and go to sleep. And I wouldn't worry at all. The only thing I might worry about is perhaps some small animal, maybe getting a whiff of something in the trash and ambling their way in. You see, we hear F-15s streak across the sky all the time. We hear helicopters. We don't live in fear. We know who they are. We see the pilots down at the local grocery store. There are friends. There are neighbors. There are allies. And the reason Florida can do this is because while I'm not trying to make it as if a Florida citizen is more valuable than any other citizen of any other state, is we have the money to fly our own wing of F-15s. To train our own engineers. And to do our own infantry training and close combat training. I brought this particular unit up because I thought it was important for people to understand we're only there's only six units like this in the whole of the United States operated by the Florida Air National Guard, the Red Horse Squadron. Who are the Red Horse? Well, Red Horse is an acronym. Rapid Engineer Deployable Heavy Operation Repair Squadron. Now, what do they specifically do? I'm just going to read this one small paragraph. The 202nd Red Horse Squadron represents a major element in the Air Force Red Horse program tasked with a mission to provide highly mobile, rapidly deployable civil engineer response forces self-sufficient for deployment anywhere in the world. The 202nd represents one of only six such units in the Air Force whose primary capability consists of recovery, repair, and maintenance of bombed or otherwise damaged military air bases and facilities. The unit possesses a 16-man RH-1 team on call to deploy within 12 hours to provide site layout and bed down action for follow-on teams and combat units. Other specialized capabilities, and this is the most important part here, include well drilling, operation of mobile concrete plants, and quarry work to provide construction aggregate when required. The unit is also prepared to employ a demolition team to blow up sections of runways or highways to deny enemy forces use of base, roads, bridges, or facilities if necessary. Meaning, there's absolutely no way they could, they meaning DC, could do anything that we couldn't respond to within 12 hours. Within 12 hours. Now, this is what this really boils down to. And I've said this before, and I get a lot of pushback for it. It's not pretty. I agree. It's not pretty. It's not nice. It's not uh, fun to hear. But it's going to come down to money. Because Florida stayed open, we're going to be in a far better financial position going forward. And the federal government is going to be beholden to us. Not the other way around. 
meaning that if bills are going to get paid, they're going to need to have us be on friendly terms to get our revenue. And Biden knows this. He's not admitting it, and the people in his party aren't admitting it, but they know it to be true. I'd like to read some of the things um, that have been put forth in the $96.6 billion budget, Florida State budget, for the next fiscal year. Now, to put this in perspective, $96.6 billion, that's our annual budget. The budget for the city of Jacksonville alone exceeds the state budget for the entire state of Indiana. Let me say this again. Jacksonville alone, the mayor, their budget, is larger than the entire state budget of all of the state of Indiana. It's just economy of scale. Now, people of Indiana, good people, decent people, hardworking people, but you can't compare Indiana to Florida. You can't compare Iowa to Florida. We're just at a different level in many ways we operate as our own country. And we negotiate our own deals with other standing countries like Brazil, like Mexico. But in some ways, Governor DeSantis isn't even DeSantis, listen to me. DeSantis is not conservative enough. I know that sounds very odd, but I guess I'll read this for you and you can judge for yourself. Governor Ron DeSantis proposed a rosier-than-expected state budget for the next fiscal year on Thursday that avoids laying off scores of employees or dipping into state reserves. His proposed $96.6 billion budget is $4.3 billion more than the budget Florida lawmakers passed last year, a surprising increase given the historic job losses and business closures from the blah, 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 blah. Now, you see, this is a liberal writer, and they're trying to... uh, couch this in a certain way. And I'm just going to debunk this real quick. The growth in the size and scope of state government was made possible by the infusion of billions in refunds of federal cash back to Florida that they paid into education, health care, vaccinations, and testing, and better than expected state revenue. Quote, We were staring down the barrel of an unprecedented economic collapse. Most would have predicted that Florida would have done worse, indeed far worse, than the national average. But instead, our budget maintains and in several cases exceeds last year's funding in key areas, including education and the environment. Here's five bullet points. It would not raise tuition at colleges and universities, nor does it account for measure being debated in the legislature to collect online sales tax from retailers. It would preserve more than $700 million for planning and designing more than 300 miles of controversial quote-unquote new toll roads over the next five years. This is how we derive revenue from tourism. It would keep $423 million in affordable housing money instead of spending it on other projects like in years past. It would triple, pay attention here, triple the amount states spend on election oversight activities to $16.7 million. Yep, that's right. We're tripling the amount of money that we're spending making sure that the people voting in our elections are actually supposed to be voting in our elections. Let me say that again. We're tripling the amount of money we're spending on making sure the people voting in our elections are actually supposed to be voting in our elections. Spending on mental health, priority of the First Lady would triple to $54 million. Money for opioid abuse, triple to $178 million. Mental health fallout from the pandemic, of course, we know that's going to be the case, so we're preparing for it. Now, let me scroll down here. Now, this is still the document that represents Dezana's priorities, the purest distillation of where he wants to take the state in the coming year. His third budget will be greeted by an even more receptive Republican-controlled legislature. The party tightened its grip on the House and Senate during November's elections, meaning we became even more conservative. And once again, spending, of course, is a function of the state legislature. 
not the governor. He just doesn't get to say this is what's going to be and so shall it be. Our elected officials will go through this and see what, what's going to happen. But here's something that might surprise you. Two priorities DeSantis announced Thursday would require the consent of lawmakers to become reality. One would create a, quote, resilient Florida program that would provide $1 billion over four years to award grants to state and local governments for projects that address the effects of climate change, sea level rise, intensified storms, and localized flooding. Now, notice they didn't say man-made climate change here. They didn't say global warming here. And this is what it really, it, this is a part that a lot of people don't get. In Florida, even the most conservative Republicans are very environmentally conscious. That's part of being a Floridian. The environment is a big deal to everyone. Now, we don't sit around and wring our hands about what's causing it. We don't try to point fingers and lay blame. How are we going to adapt going forward? How are we going to adapt going forward? Sea levels are rising. Is it the sun? Is it a natural ebb and flow of things? We don't worry about that. It's like, here's what's happening. Here's what we're going to do to fix it going forward. Another initiative, $43.5 million. Financial awards for students, for low-income students. Increasing in education spending, that's usually not something that you would associate with a Republican, but once again, it's very important to Mr. DeSantis. So, anyway, this whole, and once again, they always have to put this in, federal aid was critical. When you see federal aid, all you do is just erase that term and put refund of state revenue. The federal government has no money of its own. The federal government has no money of its own. It only gets money from the states. It was our money to begin with. It was our money to begin with. They just gave it back. They just gave Florida's money back to Florida. So whenever you hear federal aid, that's what that means. So anyway, I'll give you this link, tampabay.com. Tampa Bay, of course, being, you know, one of the more liberal areas of the states and of the state, pardon me. So anyway, um, you guys have a great day and uh, I'll try to catch up with you guys in a little bit. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.